firstly, special thanks to uh, David Castle for inviting me here to speak. And hopefully I can um, keep your interest for the next uh, 20 minutes as I talk about uh, the impact of some specific drugs on driving. Oh, and special thanks to my son for keeping me up from four till six this morning. So <laughs> if I'm checking my notes a little bit too often, uh, we can blame him because he is not here. Uh, he's only two, so he doesn't really know any better. Um, so drugs and driving. Uh, how do we go about uh, looking at the impact of drugs uh, upon driving? Um, generally, we, uh, everyone around the world, uh, myself included, look at uh, the effects of drugs in three sort of different yet complementary ways. So we look at epidemiological evidence, uh, evidence from on-road performance as well as uh, accidents on the road and then uh, people like myself like to uh, look at simulator trials or experimental evidence where we put uh, serious controls around the types of drugs that uh, people are taking. I'm probably going to talk, well definitely going to try and talk about uh, how we detect and de try and deter people from uh, taking drugs. Um, on the road, or when they're going to be on the road today, and then I'll have a little chat about what I see as my future or the future of um, drug driving research going forward. So, what is uh, drug impaired driving? I guess, well, in the context of a legal definition, it's the act of driving a motor vehicle, a car, or a motorcycle under the uh, influence of an impairing substance are very broad. There's a number of substances they could uh, consider to be impairing, particularly uh, to drive in a car. So therefore, uh, internationally, there's a very vast range of differences in detection methods for drugs, the types of drug categories that are legislated against or are illegal to um, have in your system when you're driving a car. And there's also even greater differences in the way that these laws are enforced. So there's also a number of uh, debatable issues around this, uh, whether the sort of drug that is detected in people's systems is impairing, uh, whether the, the legal status of the drug uh, has, a, has an impact. So in Victoria and Australia more broadly, uh, illicit drugs like cannabis, uh, methamphetamine, MDMA are illegal drugs. And if you're caught with them in your system when you're driving a car, it's another way that you can uh, get in trouble for that versus other types of drugs, say benzodiazepines, uh, somewhat impairing on your driving performance as well, but we don't have um, as sort of easily detectable or easy detective detection methods as the saliva testing I'll talk about later for those drugs when you're on the road. So to give you a bit of an example around uh, what drug impaired driving is conceptualised. Uh, I've gone to, gone to the effort to try and compare uh, the status of it in uh, the United States versus uh, Australia. So again, in the legal definition uh, in the States, it's called driving under the influence. So it's very broad. Uh, this uh, law and the definition varies vastly state by state. Uh, the one that's up here is from Montana. I chose it because it was the shortest. Uh, one to fit on the slide and is uh, pretty clear. So you might be arrested for driving under the influence, operating a car, a motorcycle or moped in this case, if you're under the influence of alcohol or any other drug. So a policeman sees uh, your car or moped swerving, uh, they pull you over and they give you a breath test. If you're over uh, 0.08, they're like, well, clearly you've had too much alcohol to drink and uh, you suffer the consequences of that. But if that uh, reading comes back as zero or below 0.08 and they think, uh, well, maybe you're under the effect of some other impairing substance, uh, they move into, well, they utilise a, a drug evaluation and classification program. <laughs> so I always forget that that guy, that, that, that video starts before I get to the point. Um, so, and he's just going to keep doing it. Sorry, I can't stop that, but I'll try and talk as quick as possible. Uh, this drug evaluation and classification system is designed to assess uh, these uh, 12 steps uh, to assess whether, whether and how uh, the person is impaired when they're driving. So this guy's clearly impaired. He's got to the point of uh, the preliminary evaluation where he's supposed to be uh, walking that straight line, but he hasn't really understood the steps 
in that he's headbutting the line rather than walking it foot after foot. Um, if it got past that step, uh, there's a few other evaluations of the eyes, um, some other psychomotor tests uh, that are involved, which uh, mirrored in what used to be uh, utilised here in Australia uh, more often, just like the standardised field sobriety testing. And then if, it, if at this point the roadside sort of assessments uh, don't highlight what drug uh, the person is under, uh, they take them back to the station. They go through all these other uh, steps, 6 through 12, and like maybe at, at 10 you say, well, I've had benzodiazepines, and they're like, all oh, right. So that's what you did, or if you just uh, invoke your right to not say anything, uh, they'll take your blood and find out anyhow, and then you'll be served your DOI. Right, now that you've seen that guy fall over about 50 times, we'll change the slide. So <coughs> this drug evaluation classification system is uh, it's very serious. It takes a, a large amount of training and, a, and a, a pretty high percentage of policemen are trained in it. So uh, when they pull someone over, uh, they can do these tests and they're designed to uh, figure out what one of these seven sort of drug classifications the person might be uh, affected by. So they can note that down, uh, which is somewhat different to uh, the program that we have uh, here in Australia. So our roadside testing more relies on Again, the blood alcohol concentration, so the breathalyzer, but also the saliva-based testing, rather than going through all these multiple steps uh, for identification of what drug is impairing the driver. So to move more into the Australian context, uh, TAC were kind enough to provide all these figures for me. Um, supposedly, or actually, 99.7% of drivers who are tested um, are below the legal limit of 0.05 here in Australia. So there's a really uh, high proportion of people that are obeying the law, driving reasonably uh, safely, and are not endangering yours, mine, lives. But one in five uh, of those drivers who, uh, who were killed in the past five years have had a BOC greater than uh, 0.05. So you begin to see another problem uh, around uh, alcohol consumption. Uh, like if you can um, die down the track from drinking heavily, but you could equally uh, die after a few drinks uh, tonight on the way home because you can't control the car well enough. Uh, also, in the last five years, about 41% of people who were killed and uh, had their blood tested uh, had drugs in their system. So it's, it's a pretty high number. So you can see where uh, my interest around drugs and driving might, might come from. And also, one in four Victorians who admit to using drugs also admit to driving under the influence of those drugs. So, what are we doing about that? Or what are the police doing about that legislation-wise and roadside-wise? Uh, we have roadside drug testing, roadside alcohol testing. Uh, roadside alcohol testing has been around for decades now. It's been highly effective at reducing uh, the road toll. It's fairly simple. You blow into the breathalyzer. If you're over 0.05, you head into the booze bus, provide a confirmatory analysis. Uh, depending on how much alcohol you have in your system and your license conditions and whatnot, you, know, you receive a fine and some sort of graded uh, license suspension. Uh, with roadside drug testing, which is uh, more of the focus uh, of my talk, um, you, on the roadside, you uh, lick that little Securitec device there. After a couple of minutes, uh, one of three lines might appear, uh, indicating you've tested positive to cannabis, MDMA or methamphetamine. If one of those little lines comes up, doesn't bode well for you, you head into the booze bus again. There's another confirmatory analysis. Uh, it's a highly likely to be confirmed. And then again, you, and then after that, you uh, suffer the similar consequences to um, the alcohol ones. But is this roadside uh, drug testing uh, important? According to the Bureau of uh, Transport Economics, uh, traffic accidents cost the Australian economy $15 billion per year. It's a very a uh, high figure with about 600 million of that being uh, attributed to accidents involving drugs. And for example, in the last five years, uh, TAC report that 36,700 people or so have been killed on Victoria, uh, injured on Victorian roads. So that might suggest that these are, that it is uh, important. Mm -hmm.